welcome back to Excel Exposure. I hope you've downloaded the most recent master workbook file to follow along. You can see it's on sheet 13 called Advanced Lookup. And today we'll be going over two very powerful functions that when combined can do quite a lot of magic. It's the index and match functions. In the past I've shown you this ex exact same list of student and test scores, but I've been using the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions. Here you can use index and match to do something very similar but in a much more powerful way. So previously if we wanted to find a student score, let's say we wanted to find student 3, test 3, we would have used a VLOOKUP, put in to find student 3, and looked three columns over. In some instances, your data range might not be as reliable. Someone might be inserting or deleting columns and therefore that number would change and your VLOOKUP wouldn't be correct at all times. A way to get around that is to use index and match to always make sure that you can do a two-way lookup and find the intersection of where student 3 and test 3 would meet. So I've done a little bit of setup work in terms of naming ranges just so that it would be easier to follow along. Feel free to go back and look at the named ranges uh, video for a little bit more information on how to do that. But the test area here with test scores I've taken that and I've named it index area. You can see in the name box here. I've also labeled the column headers match columns and the row headers as match rows. And that way it's just a bit easier to understand what I'm referring to. Instead of calling this C5 to H15, we can call it index area because some of these formulas get a little bit complicated. So here you'll see I've got a, a drop down list of students. I've already talked about student 3 and test 3, so we'll keep these, but you could change these to anything and it, and it would work once we have the formula here. So, here comes the fun. We start with an index formula. You'll see it shows two, two options here. Really all you need to, to know is that you're going to give it a range to evaluate. And we're going to be finding an area within this range. So index area, which I've already named, and you can see it highlights it in blue here, is the range of test scores. For the row number, what I'm going to do is actually figure out where student 3 is. So what I'm going to do is do a match, and I'm going to look up the value student 3. And let me just make that an absolute reference, even though it won't probably matter. The lookup array now I'm trying to find the row number so I'm gonna look up in match rows and I'll put zero for an exact match so that should give us the row number you can see student 3 is the third one down so that should result in a 3 next we want to give it a column number again we'll put in a match we're gonna to want to find out where test 3 is again I will give it an absolute reference and then we will type in match columns because I've already labeled that area with a zero which means an exact match because we wanted to find exactly test 3 so I've closed that I also need to close my index and hopefully it'll spit out 62 when I hit enter and lo and behold it does I've also added a conditional format here which you can look at a previous video to figure out how to do that. I will hit yes so that it can highlight the area that we're finding. And you'll see that if I go in here and change which student I'm looking at, student 6, it automatically changes what the index results in. Test 3, we could make a test 4. And you can see how the index formula will find the intersection of those two points regardless of the input as long as it matches one of the column headers and one of the row headers and that can be much more powerful than if you look up especially when you're not sure which column number you're going to be using and that's just a simple two-way lookup to find the intersection of two pieces of information the index and match formulas can also be used differently here I will show you you see how we have row averages on the side I'd like to be able to pick a student from the drop down list and have it pull out the average and it actually will not be doing it from here but it'll be using the index area and calculating the average for me and we'll see if it matches the results on the right. 
So here what we'll want to do is actually start with an average formula. And within the average formula, we're going to start our index. For the array, we still want index area. For the row number, we will take student 6 to find out where that is in the match rows area and an exact match. And I neglected to put the match function in, so let me do that as well. <laughs> and match type is 0. So we started with an average formula. Within that, we're putting index, starting with the index area, finding the row for student 6. Then when we get to call number, instead of putting in a match or really anything, we're going to put in a 0. And a 0 means that it's just going to use the whole area that it finds. So for student 6, it'll grab everything within the index area, and that's what it'll pull back. That's the array that it'll pull back. And that's why we need to put the average formula around it. Otherwise, it would just give us that, that full list of, of, of st uh, test scores. So I'll put in a 0 here. I will close my index. I will close my average. And hopefully, since it's student 6, it should come out with 53.83. And you can see that it does. If I change this to be student 2, you'll see that it also says 64. And it might seem a bit redundant since I have the averages here, but let's say you didn't have the averages there, you could still be calculating this number and getting this information very easily without it already being calculated within the sheet. Again, I've made a conditional format here, so I'll hit yes, and you'll see that it'll highlight where I found it. If I change that to 8, you'll see that it calculates the average there. And so with just one formula, and very easily you can change uh, the parameters and it'll give you a resulting output. And that was for a row average. Similarly, we have test score totals. And we could do the same thing, but kind of in the opposite way. Here, we use 0 as the column. And in this one, we'll actually be using 0 for the row. And since it's a total, we'll be doing a sum instead of an average. So I will start out with equals sum. Then within the sum formula, I'll put index. And the area we want, again, is index area. You don't have to name your ranges, but it's just more helpful so you know that you're not grabbing the wrong area. Now, row number, again, we will put a 0 this time, which should include the entire area that we find, the entire column that we're referencing. And here, we will do a match on test 3 within the match columns and an exact match. So, close that close the index and close the sum and hopefully since test 3 is total I can see is 691 right here hopefully the result will be 691 and you can see that it is again I'll turn on this conditional formatting here and it highlights where it is again feel free to change these and it'll certainly not only recalculate and give you the correct total and these would work, again, without these totals here or without these averages here since it's actually calculating it within the formula. So feel free to play around with these. Also, take a look at the conditional formatting rules that I put in here. They're a little bit interesting and also relate to the last video that I did on conditional formatting. I hope you found uh, usage of index and match together to be helpful and you can certainly use it in many other different ways and I look forward to seeing what kind of creative things you can come up with. Hope that was helpful, and feel free to check back for more updates soon.